Today I'm going to give you a quick review of a car that I've had for a year and uh, I've put maybe 2,000 miles on it, maybe maybe less, less than 2,000 miles on it. The, the 2015 Camaro Z28, Camaro, 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 whatever you want to call it. Um, it's a very special model. They made very few, 1,800 I believe. And uh, there are plenty of videos out there that talk about the, the, the basically the type of car that it is. It's not your traditional Camaro. It's the first effort, I think, by an American company to create something that was super track focused. Um, sort of like an American GT3, I like to call it. It was made only in two years, 2014, 2015. Just like my GT3, the 996.2 GT3 was made in 2004, 2005. So this one, this car comes 10 years after the the first GT3 that came to the US, at least the 996, which is the car that I have. Um, when this car came out, I've always wanted it. Uh, I always liked the, the concept behind it. It was the least American of American cars. So... Uh, I always wanted it and last year when prices were super high for everything this guy decides to to buy one and uh, yeah I'll give you a quick walk around um, hopefully I'll get to drive it a little bit uh, around town there's not as much drama as the 360 or or the GT3 um, this is a big car <laughs> it's it's a big girl uh, it's very heavy. Uh, I can't remember what it is. 3,800 pounds, which this one being an American car, we need to talk about it in pounds. So <laughs> uh, that's the that's the weight. Seven liter engine, rear wheel drive. Uh, anyways, let's let's give it a quick walk around, and then um, I'll start it up. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna start it up right now. That Camaro Z28. Um, as I said, this car came out in 2015, 2014, sorry. This is a 2015 car. Um, I always like the fact that this car came with no options. Basically, at the time you could choose the color and they and she had like four colors, red, black, white, and gray. And then there was another type of gray, I believe. Uh, one was silver, one was darker. Uh, but then you could only, <laughs> you could only pick if it had radio and air conditioning. Most of them came with the radio, which is not fancy at all. And, um, some of them came with their conditioning. Fun fact, the number 666 out of the 1800 that they made <laughs> was with no radio and no AC and it was all black. Um, that was, I think it was funny. Anyways, the interior beside uh, the steering wheel, the shift knob and the seats is, is mostly identical to, to a Camaro. Honestly, if you are getting the Z28, you're not really getting it for the interior of the car. Um, you're getting it for, for the performance aspect. Seats are fine. Um, I, I mean, everything is, it works well, right? And 996 GT3 doesn't have a fantastic interior, if you think about it. It's got some carbon fiber here and there, but there's nothing. I, I'm, you're not getting the Z28 because of the, the stunning interior. So it's pretty simple. All the info is there. Uh, it actually has a little computer here, uh, performance menu, kind of tells you all the temperature, pressure, lap timer, G. Anyways, I always leave it on the oil temp so that I can see when she is warm to go. Well, okay, so nothing to see. Oh, uh, on the back, actually, see the rear two seats, just like in a normal Camaro. Um, if you have a kid, it's kind of nice to have a fun car with the rear seats. That's why the 996, the, the, the GT3, or the is is not as 
practical. I hate that term on a sports car, but uh, this car, it, it has happened that I took my little girl to, um, to school. Oh my God, look at these doors. They are huge, so big, so wide. But these are features of, the, of just a Camaro, you know? They're not features of, of the Z28. What, what are the features of the Z28? Well, first of all, massive carboceramic brakes. Look at them. I never had a car with carboceramics and uh, this is my first car with it and, and I, I love them. These are aftermarket wheels. Uh, I have the stock ones at home. Uh, these are 20 inch wheels, 285s. The stock ones are 19 305 sections. So much, much wider in the front. Previous owner put these, I guess, when the tires will run out, I'll replace them. Uh, then what else do we have? Well, we have these side skirts. They are um, custom to the Z28, as these are also, the, this wider body, let's call it this way. This huge front lip. I don't know why it reminds me of the one of the S2000 CR uh, that had like a big spoiler in the front. This is actually steel. So this is, this is like, you could step on it. And um, it, this is hard. So it, it's not something that it can uh, flex. Let's put it this way. The bow tie to increase the flow. I think this is the best marketing trick that they came up with. Um, it's got this carbon fiber vent, which a friend of mine makes fun of it and says it comes from wish.com. Um, actually, fun fact, uh, this vent here, uh, it has a covering underneath. Let, let me open up the engine so that you get to see the LS7. Seven liter, baby. Where is it? There you go. Here it is. Bing, bing, bing. Oh my God, this chime throws me crazy every time. Okay, this is the big boy, the LS7. 427 cubic inches, uh, which means seven liter. And uh, this is all stock, all original. So it came with this huge air filter. It came with, look, look how big this is. I, my arm cannot fit, I'm not used to it. I'm used to it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm used to Japanese cars, you know? I mean, this is just too big. Uh, anyways, this truck brace here. Um, what else? Oh yeah, this is the air duct that we are, you're actually supposed to remove it before you go to the track. There is a whole procedure to uh, before you take it to the track on things that you need to do, a special alignment, etc. Here you have Chevrolet performance tag. I believe somewhere here there is the name of the person who built it. Uh, I don't know where, where it is. I, I hit myself on the wing on the spoiler. Anyways, it's somewhere here. I can't remember where it is, but there is a little signature of the person who uh, assembled the car. Anyways, this is the, the LS7. That's the engine. We we'll close it. And then a very special thing of this car is, well, first of all, I don't think we're gonna be able to see it from here, but ah, uh, maybe. You see the rear differential that has lines, I don't think you can see it from here. Anyways, it has cooling lines. And then the suspensions right here. These are DSSV Ultimatic suspensions. Uh, back in 2015, only three cars had these suspensions. One was the Camaro, the Z28, and then the other car was the Red Bull Formula One car of Sebastian Vettel, and then the third car was the Aston Martin 1777, something like that. Um, Z28s came optional with the wicker wheel, which stays here, and this one doesn't have it. And that's about it. It just looks like a Camaro, if you don't know what it is. Okay, so we are going to drive it a little bit, just around the neighborhood. I can't really go anywhere because my little one is sick. So she's at home and I need to be close to the house. So hopefully she will feel better soon. Um, 
couple of things that you should know about this car. It has a ton of modes, traction controls and, and all that, which I, I get it. I understand why the Chevrolet did it because um, this car was intended to go fast, right? And around the track and set lap times. And you can be as good of a driver as you want and there's no denying that you're good and you're fantastic and you win your track days but it's only with electronic traction management systems that you can really tell if uh, you're losing time in a turn or not and they calibrated the system so well that um, is made they calibrate it at the Nurburgring and they call it flying car mode because apparently you can stay on the gas when the car jumps and the traction control management system uh, understands that you're jumping <laughs> so it just gives continues to give you the gas but the the gas on this car is so sensitive it's so telepathic which I love I mean you step on it GT3 doesn't do that. It does it with old old tires, but otherwise it doesn't do that. Um, so yeah, very telepathic. Still in my neighborhood, but they love me. <laughs> Anyways. You see me jumping a lot? That's the suspension. That's how stiff they are. Um, I think it's fantastic and it just it's different if you have a gt3 and you want to try something new but you don't want the sloppiness of a of like a regular mustang gt or a camaro ss which they're a great car don't get me wrong it's just they're not as track tuned as driver's tunes as these now you saw me doing that sideways that's because they turn everything off so all the traction control off there is a way to turn it off you just press uh, both of the buttons uh, at the same time and it will it will deactivate everything I don't know, I'm gonna police is gonna it's good to get me but um, I guess that I had fun why they did it uh, anyways uh, other things about the engine LS7 LS7, if you don't know the LS7, 7 liter Chevy uh, engine that was in the previous Z06 Corvette, the C6 Corvette, I've never been um, a Corvette step on guy, so I, I was not interested in them. Z06, not a Corvette guy, but that, that car is a great car. Um, it makes a 505 horsepower dyno, say dyno's 480 at the wheel, so I think probably makes a little bit more than 505. Um, it's an engine that, at least in stock configuration, does not love to rev. Um, it's an engine that I, I want to say rev limiter is seven but i want to say that around six thousand rpms it's kind of done i don't know 6500 rpms it's, it's kind of done so uh 
It's not like the ones of the GT3 that you really need to. Oh, this this car mid range torque is a punch in your face, <laughs> and and I enjoyed it. Actually, if you're not used to it, you gotta be careful because um, you have a ton of torque. Like GT3, the the Ferrari 360, they don't have much torque. But this car mid turn, when you step on the gas, dude, you it, it's going to it, it, it's gonna go this car. It's going to give you power. It's going to give you torque and the rear is going to want to come out. So it's a different type of, of driving, less peaky and low torque and more basically managing the weight and the torque that comes from the LS7. It still feels special like the GT3. It's not a GT3. If you want a GT3, buy a GT3. If you find the GT3 for around $50,000, buy the GT3 for $50,000. This is not a GT3. It's different, uh, it's still fun. I haven't taken it to the track yet, but I will. And uh, it feels special. Um, I wouldn't, the suspensions are, uh, the, the shocks are really hard, so I wouldn't daily it probably. Just like a GT3, you wouldn't daily a GT3. Uh, what I like about this car, it's also that it's an underdog a bit. Not too many people get it. Uh, the, the the Porsche owners snob it because it's a Camaro and the interior interior of a rental you'll hear that whatever I mean it's fine um, Ferrari owners they don't even consider it um, um, American car owners muscle car owners they will tell you everything about the GT350 the Ford Mustang GT350 which I'm sure is a great car uh, or why didn't you get a Corvette that is lighter Right, and sure, the, the C6, the U6 is lighter. Um, the GT350 makes higher RPMs. It's not the point. Uh, there are plenty of other faster, better cars. Um, I think personally, the Z28 feels special. And maybe it's because I'm European uh, and, and being a European, I'm fascinated by big cars if i think about my first three cars were a honda civic an integra type r and a honda s2000 and if you add up the three engines you don't get to seven liters so maybe maybe that's what it is uh, but i think i think it's still it feels like a special car i think it is uh, as i was saying a bit of a uh, um, how do you say when there is something that it doesn't get understood well and it needs time i don't know i don't know what the, the word is is there a word i don't know Cazzo. Okay. um and also consider that this car right now is seven years old okay which means that is right at the cusp i think it used to be 20 years where there was this this fork in the road where you could see at 20 years if a car was very good or if it was just trash right and uh, i think because of covid and collection world and um, a bunch of like uh, non-car people getting into the market that 20 years of time is shrank to i want to say 10 years 10 15 years so right at 10 years that's when people will start to realize hey man do you remember the z28 that was a great car and they start to get appreciate uh, their value starts to go up now if you buy the car for the value to go up i, I don't i'm not talking to you but we're just are in diff on different planets um do i think the value is gonna go up possibly it's a car you know it's got it's a maintenance uh, it's got maintenance items to be done to it so um I mean, maybe, I don't know. They just made 1800. Many of them are wrecked. If you're looking for a used one, many cars have at least an accident on the Carfax. It took me a while to find mine because uh, so many people that just get in the car, you think you, you're like Ayrton Senna and instead you're like Latifi. <laughs> so you crash the car. So there are many of these cars that had uh, a ding on, on their Carfax. Um, but if you're looking for one, just make sure uh, colors, you, there are not really many options there. Uh, make sure the Carfax is clean. Um, make sure the maintenance has been done. There is 
and it, uh, um, they're saying this car has uh, had issues like the Z06 and if you read the forums is like the whole IMS paranoia but in American uh, version an American version of it my car has 23,000 miles maybe the engine grenades tomorrow I don't know hopefully not knock on wood or hold my balls as we do in Italian in Italy um, I know that uh, also a couple of things maintenance is fairly cheap is a GM so if you're looking for replacement parts they're not super expensive beside the wheels suspensions even the um, that are custom for this car most of the other stuff is is regular even there is no Porsche tax let's put it this way even um, the carbo ceramic brakes each rotor is a thousand bucks I think a thousand or fifteen hundred bucks compared to what you pay a Porsche it's like unbelievable in summary i like it and i know that i like it because i crave to drive it um come weekends and i have choices of cars that i want to to drive and i actually crave to come to drive this car and that's a good thing right so bonus content um do you remember in the early 2000 i think there was a movie called mom i shrank my kids or something like that <laughs> look how much smaller the NA6 look to the Camaro. <laughs> uh, anyways, I don't know. I thought it was it was fun to put them one next to the other because you can really tell the the size difference and uh, just how much bigger the Camaro is. Nevertheless. I still love it. Look at this face. Look at this. Like, oh my God, it's so mean. It's so mean. I like it. Bye.